Uh, now, talking of getting to grips with various cars, he's done this a uh, thousand times over the years. And he's here this morning to help us get our Tengo Mad in Monaco on the road. He's going to wave them off bye-bye in half an hour or so. Let's welcome to the Radio 2 Breakfast Show, Jeremy Clarkson. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm extremely well, thank well, you. Well, you seem extremely well. I am. And extraordinarily steady on your feet, I have to say. I, I know. <laughs> OK, uh, which goes against one of the reports in a newspaper this morning. Exactly. Uh, so, Clarkson. Hammond and May live to fight another day. For now, at least, what are you up to imminently, Jeremy? Well, we're off to Belfast this afternoon for our, the start of our world tour, most badly organised world tour in history, because <laughs> we do Belfast this weekend, and then in three weeks we go to Sheffield. Well, I'd have done Liverpool, but no, we're going to Sheffield. And then, and then someone said, I know, let's do Johannesburg next. So it's Johannesburg, and then it's... Um, we're back in England... And then it's Australia, but it's Sydney and Perth, so it's either side. Then Warsaw. Oh, no, there's Stavanger, that's right. South Africa, Stavanger in Norway. Then we go to Australia. And then London. Well, I mean, um, it, it does sound a bit topsy Somebody topsy-turvy. needs an atlas. But is it because, is it, is it more, is it, it seems to be more, have been more hastily organised perhaps because of things that have happened or was, was it just rubbish in the beginning, the, this tour? No, I think somebody's done it, the cities by alphabet rather than actually where they oh, are I on see. the planet. So I'm going to be spending most of the next um, six months, I think, with James and Richard on an aeroplane. How is that? With James Smelly. Um, but no, it'll be, it'll be, it is good fun working with those two. I mean, as you know, we dislike each other intensely. Yes. But we do enjoy working together. And so we have got six months of clowning around doing live shows, which will be brilliant. And Warsaw's going to be good because we're doing it in their national football stadium. So that's getting on for 60,000 people. So that'd be very good. I didn't realise it was a six month thing. Well, it'll be about six months before we get to London. Oh I mean, goodness. we'll need a rest because we're getting old now and there's plenty to be doing in between the actual dates. But, of course, not as much as there once was in between well, the no, actual dates. Well, no, you say that. No, it's all right, don't worry. No, you don't have to bat things away to quite no, yet. No, 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 it's, it's oh, amazing. Right. Being unemployed, is you get busier than if you... Weirdly, than if you actually have a job. All right, has, has the uh, potting shed come into play yet? No, tennis. Really? My forehand is improving immeasurably. You'd be careful. Two hours yesterday I played tennis. Oh, yeah, but that all depends where it started, your forehand, doesn't it? Very badly. Well, that's OK, then. That's easier. Most of them ended up on streets, well, over roofs and things. You know, because I, I was rubbish at a forehand, excellent at everything else. I'd have won Wimbledon if it was backhand and serves only. I'm sure you would. But um, my forehand was always weak. How anyway, is, that's getting much better. How is it? Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> how is it going on this tour of what was Top Gear live but isn't anymore? It's now Clarks and Hammond and May live. Yeah. Knowing that you haven't got the mothership to go back to, how is that? Honestly, how does that feel? Well, I don't know. We haven't done it yet. Well, what do you think? But it'll be. I think it'll be good fun. I genuinely think it'll be good fun. We've made some good films for this because we were able to make our own films now with no... Um, what's the word? Meddling, really. So, it, but, so we've um, we've done our own films um, to put into it, and then there's obviously all the parade of supercars, and then there's the you have. Oh, we'll be having races in Reliant Robins, for example. There's a million different things we're going to be doing in the show, which is, I mean, it's broadly the same as it's been for the last ten years. It's just called a different name. And this is what would have happened anyhow had yeah. Top Gear not come off the air. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so this is you, you sort of back to normal, yeah, it's really, just, exactly. isn't it? It is. We'd have been doing this anyway. It's just the name's changed. OK, can I play you, and I know you've seen this before, let alone heard it before, can I play you, if you don't mind, and play the listeners a little snatch of your first ever Top Gear report? Oh, with my very posh voice? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Here we go. All right, here we are. When was this? What year was this? Oh, uh, 1927. No, come on, seriously. I can't I remember. No, when was it? 1989? So I how think? old would you have been then? Oh, 29. No. Well, Nine. what was James? James May was 43 in 19... Yes, no, I'd be 29. <laughs> OK, and the car once again, remind us... I believe it was a Hooper Bentley. All right. Was it a Hooper Bentley? I believe it was. Let's find out. Let's, let's listen to the young Jeremy. Hello. It's converted into what's called a two-door coupe, i.e. it has yeah. one long door on either side. And that means there's pretty substantial alterations between here and here. Customising has always been a very dirty word. You customise a Ford Capri. You do not customise a modern-day Bentley or Rolls-Royce. What Hooper, bespoke coach builders for more than a century do, is Hooperise them. 
Now, tell us about the Clarkson Real Voice. Is it the one you're talking in today? Is it that one? Is it well, somewhere in between? Well, you know, when somebody said back then, when was it, 89? Yeah, somebody said, you know, you've got a job at the BBC. I thought, well, I'd better shape something up here, you know, because I'd heard all of the Dimble business hell, I'm making announcements. And I thought that it was probably a good idea to speak like that. <laughs> Even though, at, at the time, I probably talked a bit more like that, because I was from Yorkshire than us. Because I'm looking forward, we, we've got Sheffield coming up, and that's going to be great, because I'll do it all, think, the whole thing like this. Um, and James May, of course, can do the same thing, because he was at school in Rotherham, so that'll be good laugh. But, um, no, it's, uh, I don't know what came over me, because why would you talk like that? And what happened as a result of that film? Did you get a film the next week or no. did they say, we'll call you? No, they called me up and said, we'll do, we'll do this one thing. And then, no, I know, I did a screen test and they said, congratulations, you've got the job. And then it was exactly a year before they telephoned and said, right, can you come and do something, which was there. And I did that. And then another year elapsed before they asked me to do something else. And when did you sort of revert to, to being yourself? When did Because you, it's not difficult to, to do, and a lot of people <coughs> know this when they get up to do a best man speech for the first time. It's so hard, ridiculously, ludicrously, ironically, to, to be yourself. To... It's the problem. I don't know if you ever found this the first time you went on television, is you, you go all through your life and you don't think about your hands. It just doesn't occur to you. You get on television and suddenly it's like you've got two giant marrows on the end of your arms and you've no idea where to put them or what to do with them. And now you just... It's normal now, but it, t it takes a long time to learn how to do it, I think. Anyway, what to do with your hands. That's why Prince Charles famously puts his behind his back, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, because you don't know what to do. That's why people don't like waving. I'm rubbish at waving. <laughs> but it's, um, no, so it did take a very long time. But the great thing, of course, is it was learn I was learning the craft on, you know, a relatively little watched show made out of the Midlands and on BBC Two. So you, nobody was watching you making it terrible hash of it. All right, best car ever in your time on Top Gear, please. Uh, Lexus LFA. Really? Which is nothing like any normal Lexus. If you're in the back of one now and there's a man who doesn't know where he's going and a broken tom-tom, that's not the LFA. The LFA is... Have you driven one? No, but no hesitation there in your answer. No, none at all. Absolutely all right. none at all. Well, I need hesitation. Uh, second best car. Second best car I've ever driven. Whoa, that's, well, no, that's tricky. <laughs> well, take a record. Best, take best, a record. record. Uh, second best is the way forward for big questions to big guests. <laughs> yeah. It's yes. the second best thing you've never done. Uh, so, uh, Jeremy, uh, I asked you last year when you came on the programme, what would happen? What would you do? How would you react if some. Um, Involuntary reason you had to leave Top Gear and you answered, and this is what you said. Are you ready for this? Yeah, go on then. Okay, here, here you go. This is your direct answer to that direct question. You either have a job or you're going to go and be a milkman. That's what I used to do. You could you go and do something else. You could always be a newspaper columnist, you could always go and do something else. No, no, I mean, if somebody decides one day, actually, you know what, you really have got too fat or you really are awful. Yeah. If if Top Gear were as awful as people say it is, it wouldn't be as popular as it is, and it is popular, and around the world. Reaction, please. Yeah, no, well, I'm not going to be a milkman, that's for damn sure. Not with those early starts. I tell you, I did do that, but I'm a newspaper columnist. This is called an embarrassing silence. No, it's it? not. I just want... I just want you have to ask a question. Ask the, a question. OK, because that's that's how you reacted then, but that's obviously not really how you, how you would have felt. No, well, it... I didn't anticipate actually not doing it anymore at the time. That was all hypothetical. Now it's more sort of real. Yes, OK. And so um, I know you were quite sad because you wrote about it in your newspaper column. I was column. very sad. Uh, but well, it was my own silly fault, so I can hardly complain. No, you, and you didn't complain, but you were... You, it came across as you were shocked about how empty you felt. Yeah, well, if you'd done something... I was at the BBC for 27 years and I did the current incarnation of Top Gear for 12. And it was very much my baby. I absolutely adored it and I worked all the time on it, all through the night, and I paid attention to every little tiny bit of it. And then suddenly you're not asked to do that anymore. Then you do feel as though there is a big hole, which does need to be filled. And what, which were you saddest about, if, if, it's, if it's at all comparable? Um, having to leave Top Gear or having to stop working for the BBC? Uh, equal, actually, because I like the BBC. I mean, it's, there are some dreadful people in it, but there's also some really talented, brilliant people. And um, if you work with them, it's, I think it's a great organisation, and I'll never complain about it. And, so, and I thank them for giving me, you know, such a long time there. And what of Dunsfold, you know, the airfield where you used to film it, and what of, of the Top Gear track? And, you know, have you been back? Will you go back? Will there be any closure for you? 
Um, yes, I've done. I did a charity evening um, a while back and auctioned off the last ever. I'd said I'd go down to Dunsfold, the Top Gear track, and do one last lap in whatever, and then people bid, and it was a hundred thousand pounds. A couple of people came up with, so I've got to go and do that very soon, actually. So go and do one last ever lap of the Top Gear track, which will be actually quite emotional for me because it's. I like driving around there because there's nothing to hit. All right. And, um, as for the future. Um, what can you tell us? What do you want to tell us? Please tell us something about um, you, TV shows and cars, please. You know, and, and is it most likely to be called perhaps House of Cars or Hot Gear or What Gear? Well, I mean, it's the thing we're really working on at the moment, the three of us actually, is a flower arranging show, which is... <laughs> No, it's, it's it, every week we have to go to a petrol not station. Accept, not acceptable it's as an answer. Great, no, you haven't heard. You haven't heard. You get, you've got to you got to get a vase. Maybe you have to travel for exotic flowers, and then you get a vase, and then no, oh no, Hammond's fallen over and broken his vase, and then there's a calamity, and it's probably the same. It's just flowers. I'm going to carry on till you tell me something of the truth. Honestly, Chris. Yeah. Honestly, Hand, I have absolutely no idea. Have you talked to America about a television program? I, I have talked and listened. No, I'm not talked. I've listened because you know we've, I've been at the BBC for 27 years. So mm. the, when I went, when I joined the BBC, everybody was in black and white and talked fast, and everybody talked like that, as we've established. And then, of course, you emerge after 27 years, and you find the world has changed, and you've got to learn how the world works, which is what I've spent the last few weeks doing. And then, when I've started to learn how the world works, you can start to work out what to do in it. This but in the meantime, I'm just getting really good at tennis. This is a Michael Howard moment, isn't it, I suppose? <laughs> you couldn't have been, oh, Bob, but you see, Michael Howard <laughs> had actually asked somebody to get rid of the prison officer or whatever it was, whereas I haven't. I just, honestly, you could ring up James and Richard, they'd say the same thing. We don't know. But you have been in talks with various broadcasters. No. I've just been listening. Talking would involve me saying something. So you've had meetings with various broadcasters? No, I haven't had a single meeting. Really? No. So Honestly, how, you, I haven't. how did you listen to them then? If you on the telephone or video conferencing. You see, that's a whole right. new thing as well. So, if you had to bet, would you be on terrestrial or would you be on some kind of interfaith? I have no idea. When will you have an idea? Oh, um, weeks, months, maybe a year. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Honestly, you could you could keep on pulling that rather cheeky. Well, game. I have to. I have of to. Of course, you know. You, my job. I know. You, you, I would have been disappointed if you hadn't tried to push. But no, it's. Um, it was very sudden, and you'd, I just would you'd be a fool to just jump into something. You need to have a look what's out there and what's the right, best okay. thing to do. OK, let's not waste any more time on this. Um, yeah. So, uh, now, of course, James and Richard, they are they can still go back to the BBC. That door's still open for them. Um, have you talked well, to them? Well, so can I, you know. I'm not sacked, remember? Oh, no, but you can't go back to the next series of Top Gear. They can, can't Yeah, they? no, they could go and do Top Gear. But I, it was James that said, when he, he said, would it really work with two out of three? You know, that's a difficult... That's well, it's a difficult one for them to do. And I, they haven't decided yet either? I'd, honestly, I'd, the, Hammond's been in... Um, where has he been? Brazil for the last okay. two weeks. All we'll right. find out in... I'll tell you what, in Belfast, we can all have... Well, I there. tried, everybody. I really yeah. tried. Um, now, before you go, then tell me this. And mm -hmm. tell me no more, Mr Clarkson. And by the way, you're not going completely because you're going to go downstairs. No, exactly. I'm going to go and wave off these classic before. cars, which will do probably, what, 100, 150 feet before they break down, <laughs> which they will. No, they won't. They've been well prepared by an expert mechanic. He'll be my... very offended, by the way. He's outside. All right, look, you can have the best mechanic in the world and they still just go wrong. All right, tell me this, tell me no more. OK, there were three episodes of Top Gear that we didn't get to see from yeah, the last series. that's true. What did we miss? You miss... Actually, to be honest, they weren't the strongest films we've ever done, but they weren't bad, and actually you will get to see them. They are actually being edited. I'm not quite sure. I think they'll have to present them with an actual elephant in the room, but because I won't be there, but they, um, in the films, if that makes sense. So they, they will... They are being edited. And they, you know Andy Willman, the producer of the show, mm -hmm. he's actually in the edit now doing them. So they will get shown at some point. But it'll be somebody else. It'll be the cleaner or James. Or I suppose James and Richard could. I don't need. You see, I don't even know that. <laughs> I, I don't know. even but, know that. But what's on the film? I just want to know. Just give what's, us a on sense what's on the film is one where we had to go and buy very cheap four by fours, and I do mean for like a couple of hundred pounds, not even thousands of pounds. And the other one was getting some old classic cars. Hence my knowledge about classic cars yeah. at the moment, and then go on a sort of traditional classic car enthusiast weekend, and a lot of oh, I'll see your carburetors, all, all that, and uh, so we did that. Um, and so there were those two films. <coughs> excuse me, those two films are presently being edited and will, because they do belong to the license fee payer, so they should be shown. You know, you paid for them, so you should um, 
you should get to see them if that's what you want. Obviously, a lot of people will now be going, oh, not more Top Gear, I'm not going to do anything worse. I but well, for maybe. those who do like it, there will be one last hurrah. All right, OK, uh, let's go downstairs. Let's wave these gorgeous people off to Monaco. Let's do that. Uh, what are we going to play, MacArthur Park? Give uh, us time. I think we're going to play uh, various things. Can I go through that with you during the news? Yeah. OK, um, and also we're going to ask, can Clarkson still kick it when it comes to describing cars? There you go. They're coming from all four corners of Europe.